Since everybody is uh, pretty much now back in school, one thing I remember in school uh, was that when the school year started back, uh, we would always have to rehash a lot of what we learned the previous year. Okay? It's amazing what a two-month break during summer <laughs> uh, can do. It's like you forget everything. Um, I remember just going to school and thinking, didn't we learn this last year? And realizing, uh, yeah, yeah, we did learn it last year, uh, but we've forgotten it and we've got to learn it again. Um, the summer was a time of fun and relaxation, but it was also a time uh, where many students forgot some of their lessons. And I, I think this is a good time of year uh, for us to go over some of our core commitments so for us to go over some of our core commitments uh, in order to remind everyone and impress upon us their importance. Uh, the, the Apostle Peter had this idea in 2 Peter 1.13. He says, I think it right as long as I am in this body to stir you up by way of remembrance. I think it right as long as I am in this body to stir you up by way of reminder. Um, Peter wanted to remind them of things that they already knew. Yeah, you guys have heard me say this before, uh, but um, you haven't put something in your long-term memory until you are sick of hearing it, okay? Um, the, the memory experts say that something is not entered into your long-term memory until you have heard it so much that you're tired of hearing it. Uh, so I think it's good for us to remind ourselves of some things sometimes, and, and today I want us to, to remind ourselves of our mission statement. Connect with God, connect with others, and connect others with God. But what does that look like on an individual level? And I think it's a short jump from there to realize as Christians we have three basic commitments to God in fulfilling our mission and purpose on this earth. We have discipleship, community, and commission. Discipleship, community, and commission. Or to put it another way, uh, reaching up to become like God, reaching into the body of Christ and experiencing its sweet fellowship, and reaching out to others so that they may become like God and be included in His body. And These are our three core commitments. Now, I'm going to remind us of these things, and many of you are going to say, well, I do these things every day, and, and I, that's wonderful and that's great. But we have many in this church who do not do these things. Okay? And they need to be reminded. All right, so this is a reminder for us. I want us to uh, each year to remember what it means to be a member at Broad Street. To remember what it means to be a member at Broad Street. Now, uh, in Churches of Christ, historically, we don't sign confessions. Okay, uh, there, there are many church traditions over the years that have signed confessions, and that's basically to say, I've made a covenant with God, and this is what God expects of me, and I'm going to sign this confession to say, I'm going to live up to this calling that God has called me to. We traditionally don't do that, okay? We sort of take it on, on faith that someone, if they have, uh, have been baptized into Christ, if they've received God's Spirit, if they have put their trust and their hope and their faith in God, if they've had a conversion uh, to Christ and they are a disciple of Christ, that they're going to do these things. Okay? We don't make people sign something. But I think it is good that we understand that we have made a covenant with God. And if you haven't made a covenant with God, okay, if you have not uh, become a follower of Jesus, we'd love to talk to you about that. And, 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 uh, and study with you, and I hope that we can do that one day. But I want us to understand that we have a commitment to God and to His church. And so we're going to talk about those three core commitments today. And if you have your Bibles, what we're going to talk about them is from Romans chapter 12. I hope you'll get your Bible. Everybody bring something they can follow along with, a Bible, tablet, uh, something like that. Okay, uh, there could be um, the, there should be a, a pew Bible in most pews. If you didn't bring a Bible, you can grab one of those. Um, if you don't have a Bible, we'd be happy to to get you one and, and help you with that. Uh, Romans chapter twelve, Romans chapter twelve. I hope uh, that you will turn over there with me and, and talk uh, or, or look at Romans twelve with me as we talk about discipleship, community, and commission our three core commitments here at Broad Street. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12, 
verse 1. This is a, a, a passage that you all have heard me talk about a lot. I've taught this passage quite a bit. It's, uh, to me, it is one of the core passages in the Bible that is super important. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers. Some versions say, uh, I beg you. Okay, that's the strength of the word there. I appeal to you. I beg you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, because of the mercies of God, and if, if you read uh, the rest of Romans, uh, leading up to Romans chapter 12, Paul is talking about the mercies of God. The fact that Christ uh, died for the godly and the ungodly. The fact that, uh, that, that Christ, um, even though we didn't trust Him, even though we didn't love Him, He died for us. Those are the mercies of God. He says, because of those mercies, I am begging you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. I am begging you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Here we have the call to discipleship. The call to discipleship. Our mission statement, the first line of our mission statement is connect with God. That's what this is. Discipleship, connecting with God, becoming like God, coming to know God, coming to know Jesus, coming to know Christ, coming to know ourselves, who we are and what our place is in this world and what God expects of us. This is the beginning for all of us. We have to be disciples of Christ. If we are committed to Christ, if we are true followers of Jesus, we're going to be His disciples. We're going to be His disciples. We're going to wake up every day and present our, our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is our spiritual worship. That's how we worship God. We wake up every day and we say, God, what can I do for you today? What can I do in your name today? What am I doing today that needs to be sanctified for you? When I go to work today, how can I be like your son? When I interact with my family today, how can I be more like you today, God? When I go to school today, how can I be like Jesus in the midst of people around me who may not be like Jesus? I beg you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. We have that commitment. That is a core commitment that we wake up and we say every day, first of all, first and foremost, I'm a disciple of Jesus. It's not my family name that's first and foremost. It's not my job that's first and foremost. It's not the place that I am educated that's first and foremost. It's not uh, my family that is first and foremost. It is not uh, my political party that I'm a part of that's first and foremost. It's not my country, my citizenship that is first and foremost. It is the fact that I am a living sacrifice for the God of heaven. That's first and foremost. That's what it means to be a disciple of Christ, to reach up and to become like Him, to be transformed, not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed in the renewal of our minds. We have that commitment. And so I hope that every day you've decided, how can I live this way for you? How can I live this way for God? What are the tools that I need to live this way for God? I hope that every day we decide, okay, I need to open up God's Word and I need to at least read a little bit of it. I hope that we've decided that every day I need to, to come to God in prayer and, and I need to, to get on my knees and talk with Him and, 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 and let Him know the desires of my heart and know my struggles and, and lift those things up to Him. I hope we know every day that the Broad Street Church is trying to give us opportunities to be disciples of Jesus. That we meet every week 
Sunday morning for a Bible class where we learn about God, where we learn about the history of God's people. That's what we're learning about right now. And that our kids are learning something in those Bible classes. And that every week we gather and we come together as God's people and we lift our songs up and praise to God and we pray to God and we remember Christ and his sacrifice on the cross through the Lord's Supper. Every week we do that. And we're going to do that every week that we possibly can. And every week on Wednesday night we gather together and we read God's word together and we study together and we fellowship together. Every week we have these opportunities. Every week there's, there's, a, there's a prayer meeting and, and every week there's a, a ladies Bible study. And I mean, I, there are all these opportunities for us to be disciples of Jesus. And I hope that we know about those opportunities and are taking advantage of those opportunities. Because brothers and sisters, we have the mercies of God. Christ died for us even when we were sinners. We were his enemies. Let's not forget discipleship. I hope that you are engaged in that core commitment. I hope that you are. But that's not all. We, our mission statement is connect with God, connect with others. Okay? Our, our relationship can't merely be horizontal, uh, vertical. We can't uh, be someone who is a, a, a follower of Jesus uh, just in the sense that we have a relationship with God and we don't care about other people. That wouldn't be good. That wouldn't be biblical. Christ died for the church. We have Christ as the head and the church is his body. And so we have the second core commitment is community. Community. We reach into the community of believers, to the community of God's people. Connect with God, connect with others. I want you to continue reading with me Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of the faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in the proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. We are part of a body. Okay, You are not a phantom limb. Have you ever had, met someone that has a fan, that's experienced a phantom limb? Okay. Maybe they had you know, like a body part that was cut off, and, but they still feel that body part. I mean, I, I've never experienced that. I, the closest thing that I knew, uh, my grandfather, his last name was Popovitz. Okay. You can guess where he, he was. We were Czechoslovakian. Okay. Um, he immigrated. Uh, my, this is my great-grandfather. He immigrated from Czechoslovakia uh, to uh, America. And um, he lived in Ohio. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio is where he lived his whole life uh, when, once they immigrated. Um, he was, was missing um, half of his thumb. He was missing half of his thumb. And he had, he had just a really good sense of humor about it. He would, like, like show his nub to you, like, and make, like, try and gross you out. I don't know. You, you ever meet someone like that? I mean, I, he just, he would, he'd, he'd touch you with it. <laughs> because <laughs> he knew that it was, I don't know, I guess it was awkward and weird, but he'd just try and gross you out with his nub. Uh, I don't know that he ever experienced a phantom limb, but, but we can't be phantom limbs, okay? We cannot be people who are cut off from the body, who still have uh, a connection with the head, okay, with Christ, but we're cut off from the body. We can't be that. No, he says each member of the body has a function, And we're all working together uh, with God's grace to bless one another. Here's how that looks carried out in practicality. Verse 9, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, but fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, and seek to show hospitality. 
There is a, 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 a really important aspect of this, that, that we can't just be people who, uh, who come to church, you know, and we sing, we pray, we worship, and then, and then, then that's, that's, that's it, okay? We can't, we can't be that, all right? We cannot be phantom limbs in the body of Christ. We cannot cut ourselves off. That is not what Christ died for. That's not what Christ intended. As we've been studying on Sunday morning's church history, uh, there was a, a, a big movement of individuality in Christianity around the 17th century, as we've been discussing. Uh, and, and, you know, for all intents and purposes, that was a good thing. Okay? The individual was important. But they went too far in the sense of, uh, just give me Jesus and forget about the church. Friends, that's, that's not how it works. Yes, we connect with God, but we also connect with others. We also connect with others. Those one another passages, love one another, show hospitality to one another, outdo one another in showing love, care for one another. We can't do those if it's just about us, if we don't come together with God's people, community. That is a core commitment to the mission of this church, and I believe to the mission of the universal church of God. It's a core commitment. We cannot forget that we are to connect with other people. Adam could not be alone. He needed his Eve. God the Father is not alone. There is God the Spirit and God the Son. We exist in community. It is part of our nature. We cannot be alone on our own. And so one of the core commitments here is that we connect with others, that we reach into the body, and we have those kinds of opportunities here. We have those kinds of opportunities here. We have fellowship, and, and we have Bible study where we come together, and we have small groups where we, we go in each other's homes, and uh, we get together because that's what God's people do. Acts chapter 2 says that the early church had all things in common. Now, what does that mean? That they all were Alabama fans? Absolutely not. Okay, that is not what that means. Um, but what it does mean, what it does mean is that they came together and they shared with each other. And they did things with each other. And we want to emphasize that. We really want to emphasize that here at Broad Street. Um, and so if you're missing out on these things, if you're missing out on, on, on getting together with God's people, uh, we want to encourage you to, to get back in those things, okay? We want to encourage you to get back in those things because that is important. Connect with God, connect with others. But then there is a third core commitment, and that is commission, to reach out and connect others with God. The Great Commission you guys know it, Matthew chapter 28. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and teaching all that I have commanded to you. Make disciples. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples. Reach out the Great Commission. So Paul, he starts with the individual. He starts with the inward man, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. You work on yourself. You, you disciple. You work on your relationship with God. You present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. You wake up every day and you allow your mind to be transformed to the image of God. You become like, more and more like Jesus every day. You be a disciple of Jesus, the individual, you personally. And then he moves out a little bit. And he says, you know what? Those collective people who have received God's grace, who I've given different gifts to and different abilities to, you work together for the, the benefit of each other. You are the body of Christ. And so I want you to love one another and I want you to be hospitable to one another. I want you to take care of one another and spend time with each other and, and love each other. But then he sort of turns and goes a little broader. And he goes beyond just those core people in that community. I want us to continue verses 14 through 21. Romans uh, chapter 12, verses 14 through 21. Bless those who persecute you. Most likely, who's persecuting you? Someone on the outside. 
not one on, on the inside. Certainly, that could happen on the inside. Lord willing, it wouldn't. But most likely, he's talking about outsiders. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so, wa- so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Verse 20, to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not become over- uh, be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. What's he talking about here? He's saying... Our focus, first of all, needs to be on ourselves, discipleship. we got to be like Jesus. Second of all, it needs to be on each other, those who have collectively received the grace of God and, and that God has, has gifted us to work together in the body of Christ. And then it needs to go beyond that. It needs to go outside of the, the walls of the church building. And it needs to go on mission. Connect with God. Connect with others. Connect others with God commission. Love those people out there. Even if they're not like you, even if they don't like you, even if they're nasty and mean and gross, even if you have completely and totally different values, even if they vote differently in the ballot box, even if they talk differently, even if they listen to different kinds of music, even if they are totally and completely and wholly different from you and are antagonistic to you and your beliefs, you love them. Why? Because that's our commission, to go into all the world and tell people the good news. I've decided... I went to this church conference this week. I was inspired, and I, had, I finally got to listen to someone else preach to me, pour into me. Um, and it, it, was, it was good for me. It was good for my soul. And the, the whole thing was about discipleship, and I've decided 2023, our theme has to be on discipleship, on making disciples. It's got to be. It's got to be. And that's what this is about, that our focus is not just in ourselves, and it's not just inward toward our people, but it also becomes outward toward the world, and toward others. That's a major core commitment of Broad Street. And so we have ministries here for that. Friends, our Wednesday night ministry, it's, in, in my opinion, our Wednesday night ministry, if it is not already outreach, it needs to be outreach and not in reach. It needs to be outreach. It needs to be, this is the time where we serve people who are not necessarily part of our group. And we quit worrying about us and what we want, and we serve those people. And uh, we, we have great Bible classes for kids. We let people bring their kids, and we serve those people who have brought their kids to our, their Bible class. And, and we have, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, I, this is my vision for Wednesday nights. Instead of my Bible class, give me my Bible class, we're going to serve. And we're going to feed them, which, by the way, we need people to work in the food ministry. By the way, that's an outreach. We need it. People are getting burnt out. They're getting tired. We need it. We need you. Okay? We're going we're gonna to feed people. We're going to serve them. We're going to uh, find out what their needs are. We're going to have uh, classes on marriage, and we're going to have uh, classes on drug addiction, and we're going to have uh, classes on, uh, 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 for, for, for divorced people, and we're going to have classes on finances, and we're going to help people. And we're going to teach their kids, and we're going to connect with them, and we're going to invite them to come into our lives and, and come over to our homes, and we're going to love them and care for them. That's, that's my vision. Wednesdays. Out. Outreach. Now, for a vision to actually come to fruition, (laughs) I can sit here and dream and talk about it all day long, but we got to do the work to do it. Outreach. I know the blessing box has been a difficulty I know, I've, I've heard some of you uh, lament some things about it, and I know it's been difficult, I know. 
I know that we put groceries in that box and then someone comes with a shopping cart and, and totally empties the box 10 minutes later. I know that happens. Okay? But I want you to know that there's probably someone who's being blessed by that. I want you to know that there are families who want to come to this church because they see this church reaching out. Because they see this church doing the backpack ministry earlier this summer. Because they saw this church doing marriage counseling earlier in the summer. Because they saw the church uh, doing the blessing box and the, the continued effort in that ministry. Because of uh, the meals here on Fridays and the sandwich ministry. People see that. And I do not want us to grow weary in well-doing, as Paul puts it in Galatians chapter 6. I know that that is easy to do. To be honest, I get that way. I do. It's exhausting. But it is one of our core commitments. It is one of our core commitments. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We have these core commitments. I don't know what every one of you is doing. I don't know. I certainly don't know what you're doing in your private life for discipleship. I don't know. But I, I want you today to know that if you, have, uh, made, if you have decided that you are a member at Broad Street and that you have submitted yourself under the eldership at Broad Street and the five men who shepherd this church and you have submitted yourself to ultimately to the headship of Christ, that we're committed to Him. You know that. You know that. And we have these core commitments, discipleship and community and commission. And I, I realize we all have different talents. Okay? We have different talents. I'm not good at talking to strangers. Can't do it. I just, you know, I, I, can, I can have conversations, but, you know, just going out and talking to strangers, it's just not, it's not a, a talent of mine. Some people are better at that. Uh, Eddie Murphy's one of those. Man, dude, you can talk to anybody. He just, <laughs> Eddie Murphy can just talk to anybody. Okay? He has that talent. We all have different talents and gifts. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying we have to do things that we're not good at. But in some way, we all have these core commitments. And I hope that you will remember that we have those commitments and that we can get to work. We can get to work. I, I'm, I'm going to be annoying, okay? I've gone to this conference, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready. I, I want 2023 to be a big year. I want us to be disciple makers. Uh, I'm, you're going to be like, will you shut up? Okay? But I'm going to keep talking about it, and I'm, I'm going get, to get on to it, okay? We're going to be on it. Um, once again, we do not traditionally sign confessions in churches of Christ. But I think that it's important for each member to understand that they have a responsibility to keep our three core commitments in pursuit of fulfilling our mission here at Broad Street. I'm going to leave you with this. There should be some potatoes up on the screen here in just a minute. See those the potatoes? Okay. God did not create, sustain, die for, and redeem us by His shed blood for us to be pew potatoes. Okay? He didn't do that for us to be pew potatoes, to simply come and... If, if that's what God wanted, He would have made mannequins to sit in these pews. Okay? That's not what He created us for. He created us in His image to be people who think, to be people who, who create, to be people who love and, and, and serve, because that's who He is. I know that many of you are doing that. I know that many of you have been doing that for years and you're tired. But I want us to increase our resolve. Those of you who have not gotten involved, I, I want us to, to, to increase our resolve. We're not pew potatoes. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And it's important. I want to offer you an invitation today. This is one of our traditions. We sing a song and we invite you to respond to the message. We'd love to study with you, pray with you. Uh, the way that we do this is you can come stand, sit up here on the front pew and we'll talk to you. 
I've already received a prayer request from someone that we'll read in just a minute. Um, but uh, I, I, want, I want you to, to know that you can respond to God's message. I want you to know that you don't have to come up here to do that. Look, I mean, I, I know coming up in front of a group of people is not everybody's idea of a party, okay? <laughs> I, I get it. I, 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 you know, I, I think for a long time we've created this to be like the walk of shame, you know, like, oh, I did something bad. I guess I got to do the walk of shame. No, that's not what this is. This is a time for you to come and us pray over you and pray with you. For some, uh, we've got old ladies on standby, standby to give you a big hug if you want it, okay? Uh, we, we want this to be a time where we can share our struggles and our problems. Um, if you want to reach out to me privately, you can do that as well. Uh, whatever it is that you need, we'd love to help you. Um, don't hesitate. Come as we stand and as we sing.